This week in indoor football, we got a lot to talk about. A lot of things have happened, a lot of things have changed, a lot of things have gotten a little bit crazy, especially in the CIF. We'll talk about the CIF later. We got to get over this other stuff first. Um, the, the CIF is the big picture here, um, but the but the IFL and the other leagues, you know, we got to talk about them and stuff like that first before we get to the CIF and their nonsense that has happened over the past week or so. Um, the IFL, the championship game, I'm not calling it the national championship, I wish it was still called the United Bowl. The championship game ticket prices, they, uh, they're they pretty high. Um, some, of, some of the tickets have been on sale for a couple days now, some for like pre-sale, like June the 1st, and then, you know, like the um, regular sale on like June the 3rd or whatever. Uh, these are pretty expensive, I believe. And there was around the area of like fifty to seventy-five bucks, you know, which is you know, not not ideal. Um, there is a discount, but you know that's not even going to come into play for another two months. That's not going to come into play for another two months because we still got a lot of football left. So, you know, that discount, which is like half off or whatever, that's not going to really affect anything for quite some time. Um, so there's that. Um, the games this week in the IFL were pretty good. Duke City, you know, Deuce, you know, the Deuce saved the day in Duke City against Massachusetts, you know, and you also got Arizona whipping up on Bay Area. Naz just finished up beating up on San Diego. You know, well, not really beat up, but I mean, Naz is, you know, technically in first place, you know, along with Arizona, I believe Naz and Arizona will be meeting very, very soon. Um, you know, and then there's, you know, like Quad City getting whipped by Green Bay and Sioux Falls and Iowa splitting and Frisco still continuing to win against the Bismarck team that looked kind of inept on offense out there. You know, it, it's 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 been good. It's been some good, some bad, but you know, I feel still delivering. NAL also delivering. Um, you can catch more on, with my boys inside the walls. Um, again, you know, San Antonio, despite the fact that they're they haven't won a game yet, they played Jacksonville real tough. 72-67 there. You know, Mike Hollis, 50-year-old Mike Hollis, got signed. To Jacksonville. It's crazy. Arville Nelson with the game winning TD there. Carolina Albany was fun, and the New York area has been popping with sporting events over the past few days. Or rather, actually, all day today. Uh, but we'll talk about you know some lacrosse next week or the week after. You know, that's neither here nor there at this time. And then you know you got Orlando struggling with Columbus. You know. You know, I picked Columbus to win the championship at the beginning of the season, but that is probably going to change over the course of the season. Uh, again, Carolina is in a class of their own. Similar to how I feel about my Arizona pick, <laughs> Frisco is in a class of their own right now. You know, so it is what it is, and you know, there's still plenty of football to be played. A lot of time left before these championship games on August the 13th for both the IFL and the NAL. In the AWFC playoffs are, you know, they're rearing their ugly head here in the AWFC as well. Um, the Washington Elite, for whatever reason, they're being called the Northwest Elite, and yet Idaho and the AWFC refer to them as the Savages for whatever reason. I do not understand. I, I really don't know what the rationale for that is because the Washington elite, Northwest elite, the Savages, whatever you want to call them, they didn't win a single game. They got blown out in every single game. Non-competitive, disgusting play, things that the AWFC were trying to eliminate. They couldn't eliminate and it, it was just a ragtag, you know, nonsensical type deal for that. At least Tri-Cities is going to host the AWFC Championship game. Um, so, you know, the last 
two or three weeks of the season. I believe there's still a game being played right now. I'm not sure. But Idaho, Oregon, and Wenatchee, they're all fighting for those last two spots. Idaho's more closer to the second seed than anything. So really, it's just Oregon and Wenatchee, you know, fighting for a spot. The AW, I mean, the not the AWFC, the AFA, Magnolia. They didn't make the trip to West Texas. They did not make the trip to West Texas and the Warbirds. They do have another game scheduled against Magnolia State on June the 11th, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure what in the world's happening with the AFA right now because I mean things not not gone well. They haven't gone well at all, and I'm not sure whose cap that is. Um, the Texas Jets. I have no idea what has happened to them based on my boy Dukon. You know, arena football statement. I think the Texas Jets may be dead. I'm not sure because they haven't posted in, you know, a few weeks and they haven't shown up to games and it's just they haven't posted anything. It's just the whole lot of things wrong, you know, there. And, you know, it's another case of the AFA trying to bite too much, you know, into something they can't chew. And it's just it's kind of disappointing. North Texas Bulls, the team that got kicked out of the AFA, they have added a pair of home games. Now I'm not sure if you know, I'm not sure if you know this has been, you know, reported on before, because I do not remember them adding another game against the Dallas Prime and the Mississippi Raiders. But they've added those two games, you know, a pair of home games on June nineteenth and twenty sixth, respectively. You know, those are going to be two games because it seems that the Tampa Bay Cyclones are not playing another game this year. And, you know, the St. Charles Bandits are nowhere to be found. Carolina Predators have played a game. You know, they played a couple games and they got whipped around by West Michigan. We'll talk about them in a moment. We'll talk about the APFL in a moment here. You know, as, you know, the Charlotte Thunder, you know, they whipped up on Maryland, and it's just, you know, everybody has called them out on it for not playing up the standard, which is like, you know, playing better competition. You know, that's what Charlotte should be doing. You know, West Michigan has a little bit more we will leeway because they're in a, you know, more kind of isolated area to where, you know, no nobody really wants them. But Charlotte's in a nice you know, uh, 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 where somebody could actually pick them up, you know, hit, hit the NAL, you know, but that's probably not going to happen because, I mean, again, you know, Charlotte, you know, they run the APFL, they, they were, they've, they've, they've said, you know, they wanted a nice professional league that, you know, is professional. I mean, it's called the Arena Professional Football League for a reason. So you think things would be professional, and things have not been professional. So who knows even if there's going to be a championship game between these two teams? Because remember, these are the only two teams left in the APFL: West Michigan and Charlotte. Because all the other teams either went bye-bye, they died, or they went to other leagues. You know, so. Who knows if that game is even going to be played because Charlotte has at least three games scheduled in the next two weeks. So, you know, it is what it is there. If that championship game is indeed played, I, I, I guess. I mean, it's cool. It's whatever. But I mean, it's really not a championship when, you know, you guys were scheduled to play four times and Charlotte decided to change their schedule five or six times like it's nothing so it is what it is there the FCF the people's championship will consist of the board apes football club and the zappers and also the X League has started up I believe this weekend so you know the women's you know league um, they've started up this weekend and I'm not really gonna be talking too much about them at all you know, maybe like an update September or October or whatever to check up on, you know, the championship or whatever. Um, but there's, I don't even have them listed in my notes, but I do remember that they were supposed to kick off this week, and I'm not sure if they have or not. 
Um, I'll check after. I'll probably check after and get back to you guys on that. So, People's Championship Board Apes and the Zappers. Zappers whipped up on the team formerly known as the Wild Aces, now known as the Should Have Been Stars. And the Board Apes beat up, or rather, they did beat up, they beat Adoki in a close, close game. I believe it was like 38 32, and the Zappers won by like. 150 to something like that. They won like 50 to 20 or whatever the Zappers did over should have been stars. So there you go. Alright, the big one. This is the big issue here. CIF. It has been a disastrous season for the champions in World Football League. And despite the fact, you know, my boy Arena Football Statement Dukon, you know. He's been covering the league the entire season. He's been doing a great job at covering the league. It's humble, humble. A lot of these players, a lot of these coaches. It's once again, you know, ownership that kind of you know grinds everyone's gears. It grinds my gears as a business person. So I, you know, I had a business. I have business, and I know, and I know, I know about business. Me, me and my sister had a business, so we, we know, you know, about business practices and stuff like that, you know. And, you know, I'm a contractor, so, you know, I'm basically running my own business, you know, at, at, at this stage of the game, you know, for the time being. But that's neither here nor there. I'm not here to talk about my personal life for the moment. <laughs> what we are here to talk about is Keith Russ. Dude was not paying what he was supposed to be paying. He didn't pay his lead dues to CIF. And he still has a team potentially ready to go out in the ski. Now, who knows? Because the CIF has not submitted any type of statement about Key Russ and the Mesquite team just yet. So we'll wait on that. But, you know, hopefully that Mesquite team does not play in 2023. I hope to not see that team at all in 2023. Because, you know, the league had to take over Billings and Rapid City. Billings found an owner in Steven Titus who, you know, we all remember as the guy that, you know, first, you know, had Wyoming before, you know, things rapidly changed. And I'll just talk about the CIF season as a whole in a minute here. Um, but yeah, Keith Russ was not paying hotels you, to keep the Rapid City players housed. And, you know, Rapid City players had to get kicked out of the hotel and whatnot. And then, you know, you got Billings, other, you know, other personnel on Billings that haven't been paid. Dancers, you know, people that run the ticket operations or whatever, you know. Those people haven't been paid. And, they, and I, you know, despite the fact that, you know, Keith Russ could, you know, prop it up and say he's going to say he's going to pay. He's probably not going to pay. We all know this. We all know scammers when we see them. We all know swindlers when we see them. It's a damn shame. It really is. And then, you know, good old, good old J.R. Bond, good old CIF Commissioner Mr. Bond had Sioux City attempt to give away a AR-15. But given the context, you know, of what's been going on over the past, you know, several years, you know, decades, really recently, the last couple weeks have been really, really bad about this, you know, shootings, mass shootings, incredibly insensitive at a time like this, incredibly insensitive at a time like this. And thank goodness that sponsor, one of the sponsors, was like, we're we're out of this. We we know this is not this is not cool. And thank goodness the boys over at Discord were like, we're gonna share this to National Atlas. And that's exactly what has happened, you know. The boys shared it to National Outlets. A lot of people, I assume, you know, from Various forums and whatnot have shared it to National Atlas, the story about Sioux City doing, you know, this type of nonsense that should not have any place in the game for the time being. You know, it's, it's, it's just tone deaf. 
sorry, it's just tone deaf. If you're you're angry at me about it, you know, don't be because we we all know that guns are a problem in this country. We all know that. You know, some people don't want to admit it, but it's a problem. You know, you know, it is what it is. So, you know, that that's kind of where the CIF season's kind of ended. It's kind of ended on a sour note. You know, the playoffs start next week. It's kind of a sour note to end on because, you know, the season as a whole has just not been good for the league. Again, this situation right here with Billings and Rapid City not having the owner properly betted, and that's why he sold the teams, you know, you know, this situation with Sioux City. You have Wyoming, so many problems with Wyoming, you know, an ownership change, head coaching changes, you know, mutinies and stuff like that, you know, just absolutely incredibly terrible you know PR when it comes to you know trying to make a viable team out in Wyoming because again Wyoming did good their first season but things kind of stalled out you know this year I believe I think things have kind of stalled out there were less people in the stands this year in some of the games that I've looked at you know Wyoming, they culminated, the Wyoming culminated that with a loss to the Dallas Prime it's a team that's not even an arena football team. It's that type of stuff. It's that type of stuff. The CIF Network. Oh, that that's probably one of the biggest defenders here. Because it was a bad idea from the start. And then it got shelved several weeks into the season. Which, it, again, shouldn't have even, you know, been a thing in the first place. Because, you know, trying to charge people for, you know, you know, for a product that, you know, you can't, you, you can't even use properly and, you know, make properly. But I mean, again, I think only one guy was running, you know, the, the actual app and whatnot. So he, he was trying his best, but it was clear, and I forgot his name off the top of my head, but he, he was trying his best. It was clear that things were not going to go well with that, you know. Because again, you know, there, there were just so many problems with the CIF Network app and the website. It, it was not even funny. Not even funny. Like, it, it was atrocious. And then, you know, again, you know, it, it, it's just been a season of, you know, disappointment after the off season of such promise. You know, the 2021-2022 off season was so promising. I thought, you know, the CIF could, you know, improve get themselves in a good position this year, but that did not happen. Not at all. Hopefully the playoffs provide us with some entertainment because Sioux City is the one. Despite all the controversy, Sioux City, they locked up the one by beating Billings Monday night. Salida is the number two. They have confirmed it on Facebook. They, multiple broadcasts you know, tonight have confirmed that Salida is the number two. The weird part is Billings and Omaha, but I believe Billings is the three. Omaha is the four. Southwest Kansas, they are at 500. And they are the five seed at Wyoming by virtue of Rapid City losing. And what has been kind of implied for about a week or two now, they are the six. So they're going to the playoffs. So it'll be Billings, Wyoming, and a rematch of this game tonight. And then Omaha, Southwest Kansas. And the winners of those two games will take on Salina and Sioux City. And, you know, uh, it'll be, it'll be, it'll definitely be a day to be determined. You know, so it'll be, it'll definitely be June 18th. Uh, so the playoffs start next week, June 11th. And then June 18th will be the semifinals. And then I don't know when the CIF Champions Bowl will be will it be June twenty fifth or will it be July second? I genuinely do not know because the CIF has not released anything on it and they haven't released anything on Keith Russ either, aside from, you know, Billings releasing a statement. You know, CIF has not, you know, 
said anything about the whole Keith Russ situation either. He might be bad. We don't know because again, the CIF has not released anything about it. <sighs> That's it. Uh, I hope you stick with me through all of this because, again, this is a lot to take in this week. And, I mean, it, it, it's just... It's just been a crazy season, and it continues to get crazier as we head deeper than the month of June. So I'll be coming back to y'all, you know, next Saturday night around this same time. So be sure to tune in to this week in the North Football next Saturday around the same time to talk, you know, the first round of CIF, uh, you know, the NAL, IFL, and then, you know, the other championship games and stuff like that, because there are a couple, or at least one championship game, you know, the FCS championship next week, so, that's it, I don't have anything else, y'all take care, I'll see you tomorrow for the USFL recap.